Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'll be showing off some mods you can add to your game that seek to expand on the Create Mods features, as well as add a few quality of life improvements. First mod we're going to go over is Create Food Additions by Stash Gamer Sebastian. The purpose of this mod is to add a few new different food items that you can cook using some Create features. So to get started with this mod, you have to actually prep up some of the ingredients to craft the food. So there's three items that can be made in the millstone or grinding wheels, and those are breadcrumbs, ground chicken, and ground beef. And the recipes for those are really simple. For breadcrumbs, you grind up bread. For ground chicken, you grind up chicken. And for <laughs> ground beef, you guessed it, you grind up some beef. So I'll just feed these into a millstone, and then out the bottom, you'll see that we'll get our finished items. Then there's one other kind of prep food that you can craft, which is salt. Now the way to make salt is all you're going to do is you're going to put water in a basin and then heat it up with a mixer and what it's actually going to do is it's basically just going to mix up the water and you'll be left with some salt. So it'll mix up this bucket of water. Once it's done we'll be left with some salt in the bottom of the basin. You see we're left over with four salt. So it'll be four salt per bucket. So our first two food items I'm going to show off are the hamburger and the cheeseburger. These are both crafted in mechanical crafters in a vertical configuration as shown. For the hamburger, you're going to do two pieces of bread and a piece of steak in the middle. That'll craft up, eat your hamburger. For the cheeseburger, it's pretty much the same, except you're going to put a piece of cheese in between the steak and the top piece of bread. That'll craft down into my cheeseburger. So both the hamburger and the cheeseburger are amazing food in the game. So the hamburger gives you seven hunger haunches and 16 saturation. And the cheeseburger gives seven and a half hunger haunches and 17 saturation, which both both blow steak like out of the water. So if you just take a little bit more time and set up your infrastructure to craft these items, it's definitely worth it. So the next set of food items we're going to go over are cheese, schnitzel, chicken nuggets, mixed egg, fries, and meatballs. Now these are all crafted in a mixer with a basin, heat it up, and you get your food item. So just as an example, I'm going to go ahead and craft up some mixed eggs. I'm going to throw an egg in here and a thing of salt. Craft that up. It'll mix up. It'll give me my eggs. Grab them out of there. and get my mixed eggs, which give, again, a very decent amount of saturation, considering salt is really easy to make, and then eggs are kind of a byproduct of a chicken farm. So it's definitely a way to use your eggs and make something good out of them. Now to show you the rest of these recipes, schnitzel is breadcrumbs, eggs, raw pork chops. Chicken nuggets are breadcrumbs, eggs, ground chicken. Mixed eggs are eggs and salt. Fries are potatoes and salt. And last but not least, meatballs are ground beef and salt, and you actually get two meatballs per. So the next mod I'm going to go over is Create Chunk Loading, which was adapted by Ochess1, which is originally from Create Integrations by Grimald. So the whole purpose of this mod is to add a chunk loader that actually works with cart contraptions. So to show this off, I've created two my cart contraptions, one with a chunk loader and one without. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to send off the cart contraption with the chunk loader. It's basically just a straight line that goes all the way out, turns around, comes back. And we're just going to sit here and wait for it to come back. Oh, this cart is actually going into unloaded chunks that are outside my render distance, not loaded. So normally what would happen is it would kind of get stuck out there, but we'll see what happens here. And here it comes back down the line. So as you can see, it went off into unloaded chunks and came back. I forgot to turn off the car contraption, but yeah, there you go. If you're making a big train and it's going over multiple chunks and you want to make sure that it keeps going on the line, um, Create Chunk Loading is definitely a mod you're going to want to include. Now if I go ahead and send off the cart without the chunk loader, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. All right, and as you can see, it's been <laughs> even longer than it took this train to get back, so I'm just going to go on the line, and we should be able to catch it <laughs> still going out. So, yep, there you go. You can see right where my chunks kind of stopped loading, it 
just got stuck and wasn't able to come back. And now if I just run back, it'll <laughs> never make it back. So definitely a mod you're going to want to install if you have big complex train networks going throughout your map. The next mod I'm going to go over is Create Gears by Coda Codec 22. Now the whole purpose of this mod is to add a few different gears and some other pieces that just make it really easy to build really complex structures and create. So it's honestly a must have if you like building really big, really complex contraptions. The first thing it adds is these gears with no shaft. So it adds two different cogs that are essentially shaftless. It also adds two cogs that have a half shaft. Now the purpose of these are if like you have a contraption where there's like a shaft right here, but you don't want this gear to connect to this gear, then you'd use either a shaftless gear or a half shaft gear to make sure that they don't connect. The next thing it adds is it adds a fully encased chain drive. So basically what this allows you to do is you can have your chain drive, but you can have it so that it doesn't connect at every single one of these spots. So if I just want it to connect to the top and bottom, but I have shafts here that I don't want it to interface, you can do it this way. This kind of does the same feature as a belt. You can just have a belt here instead of the chain drive, but if there's a reason you want to use a chain drive, whether it's for lag or for whatever, whatever else, this is definitely a neat feature to have. The last thing it adds is the simple gear shift. So what this does is all it does is it reverses the direction of a shaft without the use of a redstone signal. So we have the gear shift that's added by create, but you need a redstone signal to reverse it. All this does is it bypasses the signal and allows you to reverse the direction of a shaft automatically. This next mod is Create Crafts and Additions by Mr. Himner. What this mod aims to add is it adds a way to actually interface with electrical power. So it adds a MFE power interface. It also adds a new way to generate power through Create, and two new fluid items, and a new weapon. So to actually generate energy with this mod, the first thing you need are these alternators. Now, the purpose of the alternators is to actually take your kinetic power and make it into energy. So you can see here it says that kinetic stress at the current speed is 1024 SUs, and it's generating 15 Fe per tick at the current speed. Now if this is going faster, it would generate more, but the stress impact would also go up. So you have to be kind of careful about how many of these you can use, and you have to really balance it out with your power generation. The next thing you got to do is you got to actually connect it up. So to connect it up, you grab these connector blocks, and then you use copper or gold spools to connect it up to um, other connectors. Some blocks have connectors at attached, and some need the actual connector item to be attached. So for example, this next block is the accumulator. And what this does is it actually stores the MFE power. So you can see that it has a stored energy 4.2 MFE out of 4.2. Now this is the input connector and this is the output. Um, you do have to make sure that you have power going in here and out here. It will not work both ways. And yeah, so this basically just works as your battery for your system. You can have multiple of these per line if you wanted. So if I basically just attach these up here, this accumulator would also start filling up with power. So if you're using this mod kind of standalone without other mods that take power, it actually adds a few new items that interface with the power. So the first one and probably the most useful is the electric motor. So what the electric motor does is that you can connect it up to either directly to a alternator or through an accumulator. And basically it'll generate kinetic stress. So it'll actually give you a little shaft which you can connect up a machine to. Now these have a pretty low stress impact or stress capacity I should say. Now you can actually control the speed of the electric motor at the source. So if I wanted to say speed this up to 256, I could definitely do that. However, you'll notice that our accumulator, essentially our battery, is going to actually start to drain because we've got to make sure that our alternators are producing enough uh, energy to match our generator. So you can see each of these is producing 15. So in total we have 45 um, Fe per tick, but this is using 80 Fe per tick. So our accumulator is essentially going to slowly go down in terms of its stored power. So we need to slow this down if you want it, want this whole system to be able to keep up. Now the motors are honestly pretty weak in terms of the stress they generate, but if you just have something small that you want to hook up with wires, a lot easier than shafts, it's definitely a useful little block to have. Now the next item we're going to go over is the relay. So the whole purpose of the relay is basically you can turn on and off your electrical signal. So 
basically without redstone signal it's off, and then you can flip a lever and then it'll turn it on so that power can go through it. The last two items I have over here that kind of deal with the electricity are induction heaters and charging stations. So the first one is the induction heater, and what this does is basically it turns on a furnace permanently. So what it'll actually do is you connect this up, and now this furnace will always be on. So I can just take some iron, pop it in there, and it'll actually start smelting up without any fuel needed, which is very cool. And the last item we're going to go over is the charging station. So the whole purpose of the charging station is to craft a new alloy. So this new alloy is the overcharged alloy, which basically you take a chromatic compound, chromatic compound, pop it onto the charging station, and it'll very slowly charge up into the overcharged alloy. Now I say very slowly because with only three accumulators, or alternators, I should say, it'll take very long time, but the more alternators you have, the faster you can craft this alloy. So the mod also adds a crude burner, which essentially works to um, take flammable liquids. So for example, it gives seed oil, which the mod actually adds. You could also use creosote oil from other mods or um, just regular oil, I would think, um, from other mods that add it. But if you're just using this mod, we can use, you can take seeds, pop it into a basin, with a press above it, it'll press into seed oil, so I just have it pumping out of here, and into the um, into the crude burner. You hook it up to a furnace engine and you'll actually generate some stress. This is a really nice way to kind of just use that byproduct of seeds to train a little more stress and make something useful out of them. So to craft a lot of this stuff and actually hook it up, you need a lot of these spools, copper and gold spools. Then to make these, you actually need this copper wire. And a new block has been added, which is the roller. So what the roller does is basically you put in copper sheets or gold sheets, basically rolls them out, and then you get the copper wire. Or gold wire, I suppose. Um, this can really be simply automated just by either putting it on a belt or by putting a hopper above and below it with plates, sheets going in, and wire coming out. The mod also adds three new items, the overcharge hammer, diamond grit sandpaper, and a multimeter. So the multimeter is used for your electric conduits, and basically you can right click them and it'll tell you basically what's going on with each connector. So our output connector says um, 3.2 MFE out of 4.2 MFE, so we're basically saying that we're almost using the full output capacity of this, but not quite. So basically use that to determine pretty much at your accumulators is where you're going to use it most of the time just to see your inputs and outputs. Now the diamond grit sandpaper is basically used to polish rose quartz, but it has a crazy high um, durability. Basically it's, you're going to craft one of these in your world and pretty much be able to use it forever. Now the last item it adds is actually the overcharged hammer. So this uses that overcharged alloy to craft. So you have to actually make four of those. And what it can do is basically you hold right click and you can actually throw it as if it was a trident and it'll automatically come back to you. You can also punch mobs with it and it does a bit of damage. 10 attack damage, got a pretty slow attack speed, but you can always throw it. And I think it still does 10 attack damage, even when thrown. The mod also adds honey cake and chocolate cake, which can both be ca crafted with this base cake and using a filling by spout with either honey or chocolate. Then you get a new, <laughs> new little cake, which works as a food source, very similar to the vanilla cakes. The last thing I'm gonna go over is the creative generator. Basically, this just gives you unlimited power, so if I were to hook this up to my system, put a connector on it, you can basically hook stuff up and have infinite power. So the next mod we're going to go over is Create Automated, which is also by Kodakodak22. The whole purpose of this mod is to make it so you can automate things a bit easier and automate a few new items. So the first thing we're going to go over is the Picker Item. Now what the Picker Item does is basically it can pick items out of other items. <laughs> so specifically what it does is you can either just hold it in your offhand and pick items out, or you can use it with a deployer and pick items. So the things it does is it does crush prismarine, 
will give you diamond bits. Now, Crush Prismarine is also a new item that it's added, which is <laughs> made by Crushing Prismarine. Um, the other stuff it does is you can do Red Sand and get 12% chance for three gold nuggets. Ender Pearl, and get 40% chance for an emerald bit. Gravel, get 12% of iron. Soul Sand, and get 2% chance for gold. So to just show this off, I can take my Crushed Prismarine, toss it in front of this, and you can see it'll start picking stuff out. You can see we already got one diamond bit. Now these do have a bit of a durability, so if you're trying to fully automate these, you'll definitely have to make lots and lots of pickers, which are honestly pretty cheap, just some iron ore pieces and some string, and basically just automate them, put it into your deployer automatically. So you can see the picker just ran out, did a half a stack, so it's actually pretty good durability, but obviously not infinite, so you will need to automatically craft those if you want to fully automate it. The next two items that this mod adds are the wet sponge sail and the lava sponge sail. What these do is it allows you to wash or smelt things without the need of actual lava or water blocks in your area. So basically all you gotta do is hook up your fans, hook up your lava or wet sponge, and then you can oops, then you can um, wash or smelt stuff automatically right in front of these. So the next set of items is what allows you to basically automate a lot of these ores. So you can do lapis, iron, zinc, gold, copper, cinder flower, and then you can also do the diamond and emeralds using the picking method. Now these um, ore nodes are actually found just kind of in your world. So all of these are just kind of found in the overworld on the surface, and the cinder flower node is found obviously in the nether on the surface. So if you're looking for these, just kind of run around your world and you should spot them pretty easily. So the way these work is that you have these ore extractor blocks, blocks, which you have to hook up to create power. And then you craft these drill items, which again, have a durability, but basically all you do is you right click and you hook up your drill head. So to show this in action, if I hook this drill head up to this extractor, which is over a copper node, what it'll do is it'll basically mine out these copper ore pieces. So the way to use these ore pieces is basically you mix it up in a supercharged basin with sometimes you need a catalyst. So for example, lapis, you get eight lapis ore and a slime ball gets you one lapis lazuli. Iron, it's just nine of the pieces, superheated. Zinc, nine of the pieces, superheated. Gold is the same. Copper is the same. And then finally, cinder flour is made with the cinder dust and water, no superheating, which gets you the cinder flour, which you normally cannot automate um, with create by default. Now to craft diamonds and emeralds, it actually takes a second step. So essentially, you need to take three of the bits, superheat them to get this molten emerald, and then you can bind 800 millibuckets with one emerald to get your with one emerald bit to get your emerald. Now, what's cool about that superheated emerald and diamond is it actually works as a regular create liquid. So I can actually hook it up to a pump and pump it out into a fluid tank. This next mod is going to take a little bit of a turn from kind of the automation and machinery of create to the decoration. This mod is Create Deco by Elasticity. And this mod adds six new brick types, which are red bricks, dean bricks, worn bricks, dusk bricks, blue bricks, and pearl bricks. And these are all crafted by using these brick items. And the recipes for those are basically just bricks with some dye in the middle. You can see red is red, dean are yellow. Um, these worn bricks are just bricks that are smelted. Dusk bricks are black dye. Blue bricks are light blue dye and pearl bricks are light gray dye. All six of the bricks can then be crafted down into all these different types. So we've got just the bricks, the tiles, the long bricks, the short bricks, the cracked red bricks, the cracked red brick tiles, the cracked long bricks, the cracked short bricks, and then mossy bricks, mossy brick tiles, mossy long bricks, and mossy short bricks. Every single brick also has a stair, half slab, vertical half slab, and wall um, variant. The next thing it adds is it adds four new door types. It adds andesite doors, brass doors, copper doors, and zinc doors. And all of these doors have a locked variant where basically you need a redstone signal to open them. The mod also adds these sheet metal blocks. So you have iron, zinc, copper, brass, andesite, netherite, and gold. Um, it has these in the block, stair, half slab, and vertical half slab form. 
It also adds some new bar panels for each of these, as well as some panel bars for each of these. So a lot of different options there if you really want to decorate using these new blocks. Mod also adds 16 of these decals. There's one for every single die color. And what I think is really nice about this is you can use it to kind of show stuff off in your factory. So um, maybe you want to show off where your mining area is or your mob farm or show that this is where all your power is coming from. And yeah, I think this is just a really nice little addition that you can use in your factory to kind of just show where stuff is. So the last thing that the mod adds is these coins and coin stacks. So you got variants for zinc, copper, brass, iron, gold, and netherite. And basically you can place the coin stacks down as like a physical block, basically just how you place snow. Um, you can craft the coin stacks with four of the coins. And currently the coins don't actually have a real crafting recipe. So if you want to use this for your world, for your server or something as some kind of currency, it's definitely set up to do that. This next mod I'm going to go over is Create Stuff Editions by Fruity2. This mod adds three different tool sets, a whole bunch of armor, portable drills, some decoration pieces, and two little mopeds. <laughs> the rest I'm going to go over are the three new tool sets that this mod adds. Well, these aren't necessarily new, as they were actually originally added in the actual Create mod in Create.2. Now what they do is the blazing pickaxe, it'll actually smelt the block you mine. So essentially if you're mining stone, you'll actually get stone instead of cobblestone. If you mine iron ore, you'll get the iron ingot, which is actually, <laughs> which can be super useful, especially if you need a whole lot of stone. That way you don't have to go through the whole smelting process after the mining process. The next tool set are the gilded quartz tools. And what these do is they're actually a little more efficient than diamond. Um, they're a bit weaker, but they have a slightly higher attack speed. So they'll break a lot quicker, but they'll do a little bit faster. Now the Shadow Steel, um, in the original Create mod, they actually really didn't have much of a purpose, if I remember right. But in this mod, basically what they do is they give you a little bit of experience for every block you break. And they also have the harvest, le harvest level of iron, but they're actually faster than gold. So these are going to be the fastest tools that you can make. Um, as well as giving you a little bit of experience, definitely going to be very, very useful for mining. I think this would probably be my main tool set if I were using this mod. So then I'm going to go over the armor sets that it adds. So the first thing it adds is the copper armor. And now what this does is it's basically a pretty weak armor, but it essentially will auto heal itself with beeswax. So if you have beeswax in your inventory, it essentially should never break. So maybe early game, if you get a very early bees farm, it might be pretty useful. The second item it adds is the brass helmet. Now the brass helmet does is it adds a bit of armor. What it actually does is it'll basically detect if you're nearby a creeper. So if you get close to this creeper, you'll hear that ringing sound, <laughs> letting you know that there's a creeper nearby. So it could be really nice if you're kind of AFK in your factory and a creeper walks up, you'll know immediately that you need to get away or get ready to fight. The next item is the brass exoskeleton. So what this does is it adds strength and haste effects. So you're a bit stronger and you can mine a little bit faster. The copper exoskeleton basically adds strength to and mining fatigue. So it's a bit stronger than the brass exoskeleton. However, you're not going to be able to mine. And then finally, we have the refined radiance exoskeleton, which basically adds haste to and weakness. So you can mine a bit faster, but you're not going to be able to fight as well. The Brass Exoskeleton lets you both mine and fight a little better. The Copper makes you fight a lot better, but mine a little worse. And the Refined Radiance lets you mine a lot faster and fight a little worse. So the last armor this mod adds is the Brass Jetpack. Now what this does is it'll actually <laughs> let me fly. So if I just hold spacebar, I kind of get a little bit of a jetpack flight. Now from what I can tell, this is basically unlimited flight. What I think would be really cool is if it basically interfaced with the new system that the copper back tank was added, where you actually have to charge this up, because right now it feels a little OP. The next item that the mod adds is the portable brass drill. So what this does is it's basically um, as good as a diamond tool, but it actually works on any block. So essentially this could replace your whole diamond arsenal of tools um, other than your sword, but basically it'll work on wood, it'll work on... Um, dirt, it'll work on stone, <laughs> basically it's just all your diamond mining tools rolled into one. Great Stuff Editions also adds a few different decoration blocks. You get these refined radiance neon lights, 
this Nixie lamp, which I can't seem to figure out how to turn on. I don't know if it does or not, but it still looks pretty nice. And this brass globe. Now the mod also adds a chocolate fountain, which I think looks really nice, but I think might be a little bit too overpowered. <laughs> so basically what you can do is this is really easy to craft. So basically what we need to craft this is a bucket of chocolate, a fluid pipe, and an item drain, but it works as an <laughs> infinite food source. So I can just eat this and basically instantly fill up my hunger and saturation just by right clicking. Now, if that's not a little OP, I don't know what is. So the last two things this mod adds are brass mopeds and the tuned brass mopeds. Now what these do is they actually work as little carts that you can ride around in. So if you want to replace your horse with something more crate themed, you can get these little mopeds. And then the tuned brass moped, same deal, but it goes super fast. <laughs> now messing around with these a bit, um, I would say the one weak point of them is if you fall like three or more blocks, these things will actually break because um, they take fall damage for whatever reason. But yeah, if this is your style, this is definitely something you can add to your game to make <laughs> it a little more fun to get around your factory. The next mod is Crate Plus by Robocraft999. The purpose of this mod is to add goggle versions of all the helmets in the game. Basically, the purpose of this is that if you want to be able to see all your machinery and see what's do going on with it, but you also want to have your regular helmet, basically combines those two items so you're not constantly switching back and forth. Now, I think this is a must-have, especially if you are playing in a big survival world or a hardcore world especially where you need that extra little bit of protection. So last mod I'm going to go over is Create Supercharge by PicTV, or PicTV, <laughs> I'm not really sure how to pronounce their name, but... The whole purpose of this mod is to add a bunch of end game materials that you can basically use to give yourself more of a goal in the create mod and kind of help improve the whole experience. So the first thing we have are these two new tools, which are the Rolls Glow Pick and the Rolls Glow, Glow Saber. Now the recipes for these are pretty complex um, in terms of the shadow shells, which are actually shadow steel and shulker shells combined and superheated. And what they do is basically they are a little worse than diamond, but they don't have a durability. So basically you can use these forever. And now what this also does is the glow saber will actually work to get player kills using a deployer. So if I just go ahead and kill a few blaze here. Oops. <laughs> Let me actually spawn them in the little chamber, but you'll see that we can actually get blaze rods from them, which normally you're not able to do using deployer. So this is super useful if you want to get a mob farm going where you want to get those player kills. The next two items you can craft are the refined charms and the shadow charms. Now these again are some pretty hefty um, crafting recipes. So for the refined ones, you need these refined shells, which are 16 refined radiance and one shulker, shulker, shulker shell each. The shadow charms are 32 of the shadow shells, which were 16 shadow steel and a soccer shell each. And you also need to craft these charm bases, which you need a nether star. So each of these are very expensive, but what they do is crazy. So if I just go ahead and go into survival and equip the refined charm by just putting in my offhand, I'll get a bunch of different effects. So first off, you'll notice creative flight, <laughs> which is amazing. So you get creative flight, Saturation 2, so basically you won't need to eat. You get Weakness 2, which means you won't be able to fight. Mining Fatigue 2, which means you won't be able to mine. So basically it allows you to fly around, but you can't really do any mining or fighting while using the charm, which I think is a fair trade. Now what the Shadow Charm does is it's basically the opposite. You can't fly, but you get Speed, Strength, and Haste 2. So basically it'll be a little bit better at fighting, a lot better at mining, and you'll be able to run around pretty quick. So the next item the mod adds is this creative blaze cake. Now this is where it kind of gets a little silly, where you have these creative mechanisms, which are the precision mechanisms and nether stars combined, which you basically use to craft the creative blaze cake. Now what this does is you can actually take a blaze burner and when you use the creative blaze cake on it, it'll change its state and it'll hold that state forever. So if you want just a regular burner, we could do that. Or if you want it to be supercharged, we can do that. And now this burner will always be supercharged, which is 
a little overpowered, but still very, very cool. And this fuel doesn't get used up, even in survival, so craft one of these and you're good to go. So then the very last thing that this mod adds is it adds a way to actually craft creative motors. So if I look at creative motors, you'll actually see that there is a recipe for them. <laughs> so it's pretty expensive, two blocks of netherite, um, four of these shadow shells, creative mechanism, and two of these popped chorus fruits. Those are pretty easy, but everything else here is relatively expensive. You need one nether star, a whole bunch of netherite, but honestly, maybe a little too cheap. I'd love to see this require a lot more stuff and maybe use the mechanical crafters to actually make them, but either way, you can actually create these using Create Supercharged. And now Create Supercharged does add a few other recipes. For example, it adds another rack recipe where you can cook weathered limestone and make another rack. Another rack. So adds a few new things you can automate and basically just makes the whole game a little bit easier and a little bit nicer to play. So there are two other mods that don't really add anything to the game, but I would definitely recommend downloading if you're going to be playing with Create. The first one is JEI. So JEI is what you see me using here on the right, where basically it has every single block and item in the game, as well as all the crafting recipes and what you can use it with. So for example, let's just look at my andesite casing. So if I just click it in this little inventory over here, it'll show me what it takes to actually craft this andesite casing. So now I know what I need to do to craft it. I could also press U on that andesite casing and see everything that it's used for. So I can see all the items that the andesite casing is used to make. The other thing you do is you look things up. So if I need to make a flywheel, I can just search up flywheel and that'll show up. You can also sort by mod. So if I do at create, that'll show me everything that's in the create mod. Or if I want to do at create food, that'll show me everything in the create foodstuffs menu. Now the other mod, now the other mod that I really suggest adding is the one probe. Now the one probe is what I use to basically look at all of these blocks and see what they are. So if I look at this, it'll tell me it's a mechanical crafter. If I look over here, that's a cogwheel. Um, it'll even say what's in an item frame. So it'll say this is an item frame, it's holding ground beef. And the reason I like this mod over some other mods that add a similar functionality to the game is that it's really configurable. So whenever you spawn in in a world, you get this one probe readme. If you hold shift and right click, you basically get this little menu where you can completely customize it. So you can do default style, Wayla, fully transparent, black and white. Personally, I would never play with anything other than fully transparent. I think it looks awesome. And they can also move it around the screen. So if I want it right in the center of my screen, I can do that. If I'd want it in the top right corner or like bottom corner, I could do that. So let's say if I want it in the bottom left, I can just make that happen. And now it'll show up in the bottom left corner. That's going to be it for today for Create Editions. Um, and also a little different than what I usually do, just kind of showing off some mods that aren't necessarily Create. But if you guys enjoyed it, definitely leave a like. If you want to see more from these mods or more Create stuff, leave a comment of what you'd like to see in the future. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.